<laughs> nice. <laughs> no, so what I'm saying is adamantium is clearly better than vibranium because Hugh Jackman has an adamantium skeleton for 20 years. Chad Boswick wears vibranium for four years. And he gets cancer and dies. It's awful. Yeah. Obviously, there's something wrong with it. Yeah, wow. right? Wow. <laughs> oh. Look at this. A little. <laughs> yeah, I know. That was actually really sad. That was like super, super yeah, yeah. bad. I, I had no idea he was even sick. And he, he, that's awful. Mm -hmm. I, I was not happy about that. It was really yeah. sad. All right, you guys done vamping because I needed to actually pull up what we're doing tonight. <laughs> oh, <okay>. Nice. <laughs> Get a printer. I'm we're right. prepared. <laughs> yeah. All right, Next. everyone. Hey, look, I'm hosting again, but it's sort of a continuation or part B of what we started last week. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Between the Rolls, our Murder Hober Inc. Uh, attempt at a talk show. Um, and we'll go through the usual. We'll follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter. Uh, of course, all our previous videos of all our games and all the Between the Rolls, they're in our YouTube archives. Uh, we have a Discord channel if you want to come and talk to us. You know, that would be lovely. We'd love to But don't talk. do it. What? Don't do it. We don't want to talk to you. Don't listen to him. I, We're I, recluses I who keep so our so pee in cups. He doesn't want to talk to you. He's like our admin. I mean, he's like the gatekeeper. He wants to make sure that the only people that are in there are people that are Kyle approved. Oh, Lord. K Sorry, there, you know what? I'm going to Short for kick ass, Kyle I'm, approved. Yeah! That site, so all you have to be is me approved. And uh, I'll approve you unless you're a total dick. Which leads me to wonder why Kyle's- Some approved. of us slip through. <laughs> <coughs> Let's see, there's Discord. Oh, and of course- uh, yeah, of course, we have a store which we sell crap in, as Frank likes to say, but I like to say it's actually pretty good stuff. I've got a couple of the shirts, so I think everybody here has a couple of the shirts. Uh -huh. I don't have a single shirt. You don't? I am poor. I have 330 children. What? 330 <laughs> children. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> right. I don't Three, think just children. because I say number one. Every fucking day. <laughs> Unless you're going around, how many wives do you have to get that many children? Just, Just one. one, but she goes <laughs> ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, and a baby comes out. Uh, sure, sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, super virile. Um, we yeah. know it's osmosis, man. <laughs> super All right. And with that, well, of course, I want to mention our sponsors. Unless Cal wants to do it because he's usually fish games for all your silly salmon needs. <coughs> and salmon needs. Dirty and dog die dog ninja dog dice. Pirate pirate ninja. Roman centurion dog dice. No, well, it's uh, uh, I didn't think of anything other than the polishing a turd thing, but then everyone's like, No, Kyle. Of course you can't polish a turd. I'm like, no, of course you can. The Mythbusters polish turds. That's right, they gross. certainly do. So it's pirate dog dice, and they're awesome dice. As I said, I always have my set here, and they actually roll pretty well. When I'm using the character they were made for, for some reason, they don't roll as well unless it's that character, <coughs> which would be my campaign character. All right, um, next up, we're going to go around the horn, and everyone can introduce themselves, and I will start with David. David, tell everyone a little bit about yourself. Ah, I'm David. <laughs> I'm David, and I'm usually, I can usually be found here on Between the Rolls or our Thursday night show, uh, Cacophony. So, um, yeah, Zany Adventures on thursday nights uh it's usually uh a three-person adventure uh not including the <coughs> but it's right. a lot of fun it's a lot of fun so you should tune in and check us out it is a lot of fun and i mean i'd love to play a lot more but you know i can't totally hoard all the friggin sessions as so. much as you try <laughs> all you right i will go with I don't know what the hell Kyle's doing. He's writing shit on his board. I'm reminding so, myself. All right. Hey, Kyle, do you want to go next? 
Uh, if you like me to, but I'm going to be very distracted when I do it. Fine, screw that. No, no, next I'm going to go with, I love, I love your tag, man. DM Pooba, a.k.a. <laughs> Scott. Tell everyone a bit about yourself. Hi, I'm, uh, my name is Scott. Um, I go by DM Pooba on Twitter. I am um, a DM and I play um, on, on this channel here um, for Murder Hobo Inc. I don't know if they care to call Air Call, um, who is, um, he's a paladin with a, with a hair lip. Sometimes I also, I also play a very incontinent monk. Um, <laughs> that, that's, that sometimes is fun uh, every now and then. Uh, he has a bladder problem, and uh, he's also kind of fun to play. But uh, I've been playing a long time, DMing a long time as well. And uh, I applied for the job of vice president of Dungeons and Dragons recently. Uh, and they called back and said, you got to be fucking kidding me. And, um, <laughs> they saw the show, right? So they know the truth. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think that must be it. You uh, were but- overqualified. That's the reason. <laughs> oh, that's what it really is. You're overqualified. No, yeah. I was like, I was like, yo, good Lord, have mercy. I can't believe they're actually hiring for that. And, you know, but, uh, but yeah, I've been, I've been, I've been playing a long time and, uh, and, and I enjoy, uh, I enjoy my time here with my friends, but I don't get here as often as I can, uh, often as I used to, uh, but I'm trying to get back into it a little bit more often, but this COVID thing has actually kept me more busy instead of not as busy. Yeah. I kind of get that, actually. I think I've been busier, too, strangely enough. <laughs> All right, Kyle, it's your turn. Oh, Tell no, no. What are you doing? Oh, well, other than saying It was about to explode. I apologize. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I am Kyle uh, 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 here on Murder Hobo, Inc. Uh, uh, I play games. I write most of everything. I'm the genius behind the scenes. Oh, please. It's most true. Is behind things. That yeah, is it's true. definitely behind. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm more of the genius behind the scenes of this show. <laughs> oh, this one, yes. Certainly. I mean, you did go ahead and repeat points we made last time, but you know, no. who's going to question that? It's not a completely different thing it's how it so last time we covered writing backstories this time we're going to cover how to get them into the game so it's two different points i don't Um, know we did talk on point two at the very end of last time yeah i was just spitballing ideas i'm not even sure i'm gonna go through i'm not probably not even get through them all so uh all right anywho and i guess i should introduce myself since i haven't done that yet uh hi everyone i'm carol i am a hi carol mini painter i'm a long time gamer sometime gm at some point yeah i'm gonna need to run again because poor frank uh, I this is an break. aa group what are you talking about dungeons and dragons yeah <laughs> what is this <laughs> it's a it's a oh, zoom AA good. meeting. <laughs> oh and you know i have to say um actually, I, have, I have a little thing to pitch <laughs> So I am going to actually be doing ReaperCon online this week, and I'm actually participating in a panel about women in gaming. Outstanding. Saturday night, Saturday night, no, Saturday afternoon at noon central time. Uh, I, I gosh, the time, the freaking time change, even though it's only an hour, still screws me up. I'm pretty sure it's noon. It, it's one o'clock for me, noon on the schedule. So. And that it's that be- East Coast sense of, you know, I'm better than you. I don't have to worry about those other time zones. I'm on the East Coast. We understand. Yeah. yeah. Even better. Trump's going to change all that shit, too. going to bomb <laughs> your fucking better. asses. All the other ladies that are involved in this, they're all from, like, overseas. Like, a bunch of them from, like, England. So they're all, like, five hours or more ahead uh, of... I'm going to bomb them, too. So we're having an interesting wow. time to <laughs> figure out when we're going to get together, have a test call to make sure the Zoom works and everything. But but yes, and I'm very much looking forward to ReaperCon. So I uh, spend a whole weekend, Thursday through Monday, doing nothing but painting minis and binging on games and things. There'll be a lot of ton of fun. Uh, all right. So we'll get on to the first topic, which our traditional first topic is the games we've played this week. Um, 
I'll just say right now, unfortunately, Sunday, there's nobody here who watched it, I don't think. So, you know, unfortunately. Of course you know, get, we watched it. It's the greatest show ever. It is a great campaign. And every time, I mean, Frank usually, when he's here, he usually talk about it. And it, it sounds it sounds so freaking hilarious. Uh, and I'm sure this week was no different. But we had, but as for the other two games, we have people here that played in both of them. So the first one would be Fauntleroy's Function, and that would be our Thursday night cacophony game. So David, so what are the highlights of that game. Well, folks, have you ever planned a surprise birthday party before? Yeah, that's the shit we went through Thursday. We had everything. We had bowel obstructions to fights in the street with drunken uncles. So tons of fun to be had. Uh, basically what it was, uh, Fauntleroy, the, the assistant to our guild master from Under These Nuts, it was his birthday. Nuts. Under These Nuts. Yeah, my favorite yes. So Fauntleroy uh, decides to break the list up of uh, the the things that we need to the party, and our adventurers had their list, and yeah, we went out. Uh, Like I said, (laughs) we had bowel obstructions, we had people stealing cupcakes, (laughs) we had uh, try to the, the the. Brawl with the drunken uncles. That that was a lot of fun. Watching a rogue in a fist fight. Party? No, no, that's the thing. And we could do a whole nother episode on the party. <laughs> you only planned it. Okay. Yeah. No. No. Uh, there was a a mishap in the street. <laughs> Uh, one thing about this episode is a recurring character appeared uh, by the name of Skippy Lee, and yeah, just all kind of God insanity ensued after that. You know, a kid got sleep spelled. You know, uncles got pissed, and next thing you know, there's a fight in the street. So, why would the uncles be pissed if the kids were put to sleep? Well, I mean, you know the. I'll you just have to watch that. <laughs> you just ha- you just have to watch the episode, folks. But it was great. Uh, Heidi, who's uh, been on the, on the show uh, yeah, semi regularly, and um, we just all had a great time, uh, the the three of us. So if you get a chance, check us out. It's on Twitch. It is in our archives, and yeah, lots of fun. Wow, uh, that was a good short version. And Kyle, what you go over? Saturday night special bugbear brigands, which was a ton of fun, as always. I have to admit, it was a ton of fun to watch. God, <laughs> it was uh, a murder hoboey game to be certain. Oh, uh, many hijinks were expected and none occurred. Uh, what was going on? Well, you had Ernie bring in an evil paladin. That oh, was- yep, yep, yep. Uh, as well as uh, bringing a friend, a new friend to the murder hobo family. Uh, He may already be running away as fast as we can. Uh, Probably. It's heard from him since Saturday evening. So yeah, it's real shame. Uh, And then we had Carol playing her grave cleric. I don't remember the name off the top of my head. Luna. Luna. I knew it was Luna. And then you die. Uh, and then I, of course, decided to explore the darker nature of humanity by bringing Jub Jub back, the barbarian Jub-Jub. who just eats everything. Jub-Jub. And he everything. Huh? He eats everything. Oh, everything, yeah. I'll say it's more fun in an urban setting to play him because, you know, you can't really eat people there. Uh, anyway, spoilers for the night. <laughs> <laughs> Joffrey, damn it. Same. Well, Joffrey will eat people in the city and be clever about it. Jub Jub just needs to eat. Uh, So anyway, we were off to some ruins to explore, get some more money to pay the massive bill that Jub Jub had acquired in eating a a tavern. I didn't say that wrong. He ate the tavern. Anyway, (laughs) on their way through, they ran into a bloody guard who they 
uh, was immediately attacked. Uh, I mean, helped. And he was kind enough to warn us about some goblins behind us. And we were swarmed with lots of goblins, uh, which we either ate, terrified, or killed. Or killed and ate. One of those. <laughs> Uh, we kept running through after that, finding a, a caravan that had been attacked. Carol, am I not going through all this correctly? No, you're giving the high points. I'm you know? just giving the high points. No low yeah. points. There we were found, points. We had the caravan, then we, we went and tracked where it went because we knew part of it had disappeared. Yeah, they were missing a mule, and that was very important. <laughs> and a cart, apparently. And then, yeah. and then what happened? Uh, and then we got stuck in a creek. Uh, and then people got unstuck real quick. I stuck in a bridge. <laughs> That's what happened because somebody stomped over it and made, made all the boards weaker. And then I rolled a really bad dexterity save and fell through the bridge and got stuck at it. But and stuck. then someone helped you out. So it was all good. Because I believe you jumped on the thing and broke the bridge. Yeah, the right. Bridge. Helped you out. Uh, at that point, we were attacked by bugbears and more bugbears, then some actual bears, and then a it's noble wrong. lady. I think you had the wrong... Well, maybe. There were lots of bugbears. It remember. could have been bugbears first, then we got to the bridge, and then we fell through, got attacked by more bugbears, then actual bears. Uh, uh, we left some bears no, it was the goblins. Then the bear was at the bridge, and then we found the bugbears. Uh, are you sure? I thought it was the other way around, because we tried to rest, and that's when the bear came by. Oh, maybe. I don't know. Watch the show. We One of those things happened. Uh, then we were attacked by a vicious, wounded noble lady who limped maliciously towards us. So our oh, paladin, our virtuous paladin, shoved a horn through her chest. And after it was healed, she limped along, and uh, we had to uh, 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 persuade her uh, with our natural goodness to tell us where the other victims were of her horrendous, horrendous uh, uh, things. It didn't take much. Her husband was be being held yeah, was in true. one of the hostages, so she was looking for help. Yeah. Then we found this little uh, little hut with a little goblin archer, the bugbear chieftain. Uh, the paladin ran through, uh, and the rest of us nobly uh, handled the remaining forces uh, while the minotaur uh, fought off the bugbear chieftain single-handedly. Uh, no. He became stakes, uh, and we were able to help him after routing the reinforcements uh, uh, to the bugbear chieftain that is to which we were able to save one of the victims the other one was burned and horribly scarred and that was the husband wasn't it yeah wait, 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 his wait, wife wait. left him but, but Kyle that was not how it went no 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 no, no I'm pretty sure that's how it went hey you know what they can watch the episode on YouTube or on Twitch and see who's right obviously me no, he's not. Basically, there was one goblin archer at the top that our fighter. Reinforcements. Our That's the one. And then there was the bugbear chieftain in the tower that, yeah. Uh, the our paladin, paladin single-handedly fought. No, because the paladin get dropped like before he before he did. And uh, I had to, let's see, I had to stabilize the paladin. Then you came in. And your barbarian, or your your barbarian came in and finished off the bugbear. I believe I cast Path to the Grave to so you could do a crap ton of damage to it. And we technically did save both; just one was burned, but they yeah. both died. And yes, well, the, and then his wife left him. Yeah, well, to be him. fair, he was horribly burned. She had a hole in her chest. I thought they were a path, perfect patch made. Perfect. Sorry, right, the alcohol <laughs> is getting to me. <laughs> it's been three seconds since I had my last sip of alcohol. And I'm just going to put it out there that I spent two of my three first level slots healing civilians because our evil paladin kept hurting them. And it's like, okay, I may play a kind of gloomy gnome, but she's not evil, and it, it, and that doesn't yeah, healing innocence doesn't really sit well with her. So hey, you know what? 
good for you for sticking with your guns. A lot of people in a murder hobo party would be like, that's how we're doing it. Fuck it. Fine, let's murder everybody. <laughs> that's how it rolls That's tonight. usually how it rolls. <laughs> Character and playing, but in this case, yeah. Uh, plus also, you know, one thing about Murder Hobo Inc. is screwing over the other party members, so I thought that was the perfect way to do it, is to burn all my healing on people that were not in the party. And sure enough, when our paladin dropped, I had no more healing spells to heal yep. him. So I stabilized him, but that was it. At least he wasn't making death saves, and he did technically survive. So that was a fun, it was a fun. I thought we left him in the brazier to roast for a few hours. No, we took him out of there. At least mm -hmm. I, I would have. Or I would have tried because I'm a freaking gnome. And he's a freaking minotaur. I don't know if I could actually pick him up. Well, it's bovine, so steaks <laughs> and brisket for it's everybody. <laughs> roast beef. <laughs> <laughs> and Jub Jub was there to slice the roast beef. Oh, I know. You know what that? Could have let him die so that you could have. Oh, that would have been funny. All <laughs> right. So that was that was a base. That's the uh, basic rundown of the games this weekend, minus uh, minus Mizumi the ruins, which is mm -hmm. the Margot campaign on Sundays. Yeah, it's worth the watch though because they have stuff about Billy Bass and uh, Star Trek vines, and whenever there's a flail snail involved, you know it's good. Love, mm -hmm. Love flail yep. snails. Flail snails are awesome. Cute. <laughs> I should go get my flail snow. I got one I, I painted. All right. So let's switch emails here because that is the end of that one. I'm going <laughs> my, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm going to my list of things. So as I said last week, what is the section? Oh, the no. Section? Did we, I didn't remember covering a uh, number two on this list, but, uh, I brought it up at the very end of the last one, but if we have time to talk about it, we can actually go through it a little bit more in depth because that's what I was thinking. Uh, so to me said last week, we covered writing backstories. Now to me, it, it, to me, it's a, it, to continue on with this idea. I wanted to cover this week, um, implementing in your in games and from both, a GM standpoint, which is probably going to be the majority of this discussion, and even from a player standpoint, because the players also, you know, sometimes it'd be helped to figure out, you know, when is a good time to interject your story and how. Um, so the first question I put on my list, and I'll throw it around the table, um, as a GM, would you, are you more into making uh, these sort of, you know, backstories a side plot, a main plot, or does it depend? Um, I'll start with, I'll start with you, Kyle. Uh, it uh, absolutely depends. I mean, do you have a clear, concrete idea of the campaign that you want to run that is obviously going to take some back and forth, in which case the plot's as a player's uh, backgrounds end up being side plots or are you like well you know what i want to run uh an underwater adventure and let's see what the players want to do in general have them make their backstories and then you know oh whatever johnny the sailor was doing uh was attacked by a dragon turtle at some point and that's something the players wanted to face well that same dragon turtle is going to come back later and be part of a smaller campaign arc, unless it's a big bad evil guy, but I don't know. <laughs> I mean, part of me wants to say Avatar and just be like, boo! And another part wants to be like, rampaging monster, who cares? So, I don't know. It really depends on what your focus for the campaign wants to be. Are you trying to push an idea or are you trying to push uh, a story that you want to tell with your players? If it's the story, either their backgrounds kind of uh, need to blend in with these things. Um, or if it's the idea, you make it about the plot line or make <laughs> it. Backgrounds. That's it. Uh, 
All right. Um, David. Well, <clears throat> well, I think all that stuff needs to be worked out in session zero. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. yeah. And that'll give the DM kind of like a roadmap of where to go with the campaign. Because one of the things that we're doing with our campaign is uh, we each contributed our backstory. I mean, I am guilty. I didn't have it ready at the get go. So unfortunately, my DM kind of had to tap dance. You know, because every time I come up, come up with something, oh, well, my character had this happen to them when they were such and such. So, uh, so it's important to get the details out for the DM so they can either incorporate it as a main storyline and that, you know, campaign sources just kind of come in through different adventures or have the, you know, the campaign source as the the main plot line and everything else is just kind of superfluous i mean you know one of the things that we do is like our our backstories actually come with our like downtime you know after we, we ran curse of Strahd, but i mean we had our lives after that i mean we end up building businesses and water deep and all that and played that out with our backstories, uh, different uh, aspects of people in our past came in and then, you know, and then we ran into the next adventure, which sent us to Baldur's Gate. And from there, we started running Avernus and, and now we're out and now our backstories are back again. So, so you can kind of have that ebb and flow with it. I mean, that's, that's, that's how we've been running it. So. Uh, I'm not quite sure how you, Carol, or you, Scott, you would do it. Well, Scott, how would you do it? And uh, also, this was like, which do you prefer to? I mean. Yeah, so I'm probably going to take a slightly contrarian view and 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 um, maybe not, maybe it's not that contrarian, but I, I like to keep them as side plots until they're mature enough in there um and we played for long enough as as a group to where i can get a good sense of how the player wants his background to be incorporated um because what what, what my experience has been whenever a player is starting out in a campaign backstories are used to try to get now here's where i'm being a bit of a contrarian maybe a bit of an ass i don't mean to say it like this but they're almost meant to to like get additional skills or proficiencies in areas to where normally they would not. And so as a DM, I've heard this a lot, you know, uh, yeah, but my character would know that, you know, because he's the, he's the son of the king or my, my character is a blacksmith or his dad was a blacksmith. So he automatically has these, the, these proficiencies. He, he, uh, he would have seen, he already knows how to make swords. He already, I mean, so, and I don't want to say it's a way to circumvent the rules or break the game or anything else like that. But, but younger players, when they're starting or they don't have a lot of experience or they're freshly made characters, their backstories are almost afterthoughts. Unless you have experienced players that really spend a lot of time on their backstory. And so I like to start off a campaign having them all kind of side plotty related and have that coming in. And then when you when the, the player in essence takes the hook and starts becoming more involved in his, in his or her own backstory and some of the side plots, and they start to affect the other players, then, you know, we might start leak. I might start thinking about incorporating it uh, into more of the main <laughs> plot lines. So I would say start off in side plots, depending upon the experience of the player and then later incorporate into the main plot. Yep. All right, that's that's a it's a good point. Although mm -hmm. I've as a even GM and as a player, I've never actually I don't know too many players who will come out and if they don't have that skill, a proficiency in that skill, you know, come out and said, "Well, I I know that." No, you have to have proficiency in the skill to me. Yeah, you to do, work. you do, but that, they they get that from the five E rule set. You know, so what is your background, and you get yeah. some skills because of that, but. Right? 
but you don't automatically know stuff. That's why you make skill checks. Too. Yeah, so that, that's true. That's true. That's that's why you make skill checks. But that idea of your background granting proficiencies and skills right. or your background granting that, that's kind of where that mechanic comes from. So you yeah. have custom backgrounds. If they can't say, well, they don't want to be a an orphan or a street urchin or a knight or something like that, then they get into these elaborate backstories or or um, one a backstory that's not really in the DMG, it's not really in the player's handbook, and then but they think that that should give them proficiency and six new skills. Um, one of the things that happened to me that um, my DM ran is uh, this pertains to backstory with character growth and using the mm. backstory for character growth. Uh, one of the things that came out, we had some Unearth Arcana come out. And at that time, I was, I, I'm playing a bard, and I saw the College of Creation come out. And with the type of uh, play style that I was doing, that seemed more suited for mm. the character. So we actually worked that into the campaign. I actually yeah. had to go to college and take 40 hours of studies. So like during the campaign, during our downtime, I was reading a book and stuff like that. And then when we got back to Waterdeep, I had, I had school days, but our DM worked that and wove that into the campaign. I mean, I had instructors I had to interact with and stuff that's like cool. that. That's, yeah. that's really it was cool. awesome. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's really cool. So, so no, that's, it's going to say a good point too. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think of what, uh, I think I'll just keep moving on because this is going to be a, <laughs> be a good topic tonight. Um, oh, actually, as, oh, as for me, by the way, and the answer to that first one, I like, I think I really like incorporating them as much into the main plot as I can. And if I possibly, I like to tie things together. I mean, like if you, if anybody like has watched the campaign or whatever, and there have been times I like I'll be starting to try to tie together all the little loose pieces to make them all, whether or not it's true or not. I like to tie it together and make a nice, nice neat package. And no different when it comes to backstories. I like to incorporate them all in. Um, so you know, that I point. Um, but, sorry, Carol, to interrupt. Uh, um, with uh, fifth edition, doesn't do it quite as well as um, this other system that we're not going to name right now. Uh, oh, uh, that uses adventure <laughs> paths, and then they have like a little guidebook to begin you with. Thirty-two um, minutes, Kyle. <laughs> Thirty-two minutes. I I didn't. Oh uh, yeah, that's a Carol thing. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> oh no. Okay. Cobalt Press. They also write for Five E, and when they there write an adventure, uh, <laughs> they give you the. Um, I was just glancing at something called the Underworld of Ghouls. Uh, give me half a second. Empire of the Ghouls cam uh, the the Ghouls, campaign. Yeah. That is one of my sources I am using right now, and it is uh -huh. phenomenal. It is phenomenal. Yeah, I love oh. the ghouls in that. They're, they're just, they are some of the coolest things, man. <laughs> oh, really yeah. Southern Gothic with I ghouls. Try That's what I'm working that. on. <laughs> go, go, on, uh, go on, call. I'm sorry. I didn't anyway, no, no, yeah. no. You're fine. You're fine. I'm like, ah, damn, because I wanted to save that for adventure for later and see if I could get some people to uh, run it for. But um, uh, totally uh, with it, they have it. the Underworlds Player's Guide. They have the Southlands Player Guide, Southland Heroes. Uh, let's see. If you do Strange Aeons, they have, what do they call those stupid things? The... The, the player's guide to that book and where the book yeah. gives you ideas uh, yeah. as a player so, to say, yeah, if you pick this, you're going to have a background backstory that's going to go and last through the entire campaign, especially if your DM runs it properly. What do you guys think about that kind of stuff? Oh, like having, having backgrounds that are tied to the adventure? Yeah, uh, just having a, a, a resource for the players that can be like, yeah, no matter what my backstory ends up being, the DM could easily just plug it in to every single arc of the campaign. I know, Scott, you were saying that you'd like to get to the the, the uh, backgrounds later on in the story, but what about involving the players, even if it's like a tiny hint at the very beginning to just kind of keep them within this idea of staying together in the group and seeing a campaign through to the end? 
Yeah, I, 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 that would work well. Uh, I, I, I have to admit, I, I do like that. I do like that idea. Um, but I, it, I mean, like I said, sometimes when you're playing with younger players who have who haven't played that much, then what what they end up wanting to do is, you know, they they want to play Wolverine, or they or they want to try to find a way to shoot lasers out of their eyes, and um, you know, so it, it, and it's. It, it's just you, you do have to be flexible as a DM, I think, and um, understand that new players are not there. Are players that aren't as experienced may have an idea of what they want their background to be. And it may be very, very difficult to tie it into the tie it into the rest of the campaign. I like your idea, Kyle, if for for find ways to drop hints and such as that. But I just think that a, that a DM has to also be a little bit open to the idea that these care these players may not know how to run their backstory sure. you know they, they may not know how to react to their backstory they may say i'm a barbarian and then but not play it like a barbarian you know and and everyone that that plays an elf really wants to play legolas so you know i mean it's it's uh it, it's 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 these these red <laughs> ideas that we have every dwarf is going to be really really good at, at you know detecting stonework or blacksmith i mean so you're 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 fighting a, you're you're fighting some stereotypes there but um i think any guides uh, as you mentioned there I, I think it would be very very helpful a dm just has to be cognizant of his players sure good answer uh-huh um all right so so i realized i actually had the second question at the bottom and i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna throw it back out there i mean it, maybe it, um maybe i'll add the little cavat at the end so the question was how do you balance everyone's plot yeah. line and work it work them all together and make a cohesive story but i think the important thing i want to put, point out here how do you avoid focusing too much on one player oh. That because, all right, I can tell you as a player, it happened to me once, and I actually got some resentment from the other one of the other players because the focus was on my character. I didn't ask for this, you know, and I and I personally believe that everyone should have their time in the spotlight. So, but with that. And, and and she wasn't wrong, but the way she she kind of lashed out was not really cool either. Um, and everyone else was okay. It was just this one player. So it is it, it, that is a real that real can be an issue. So um, Scott, I'm going to start with you. Yeah, no, that that really can be an issue, and um, that's why I like to normally wait a little bit later with experienced players, and as you say, gives everyone a, a little bit of time in the sun. Because what I'll do or what I've seen as one successful thing is that, and it kind of gets into your next one about, you know, light, light backstories, that there may be one entire section, especially if you're playing higher level characters, okay? Because a higher level character is going to have a more advanced backstory because they're going to be well known where they're at. We have to understand that due, due to the tier systems that we have, you know, by the time they're getting into 13th, 14th level and such as that, they're going to be really well known. You know, they're going to be famous, right? right? Yeah. They're, they're going to be famous. Everyone's going to know them and everyone's going to know their story, but everyone's going to have an effing opinion about it as well. So you need to have times to where, um, you know, one player is going to stand out and the other ones kind of need to go back. And then another time, another one needs to really, you know, it's, it's like their story for a while. And when it works together, it, it's, it's, it's very, very good. Um, I had one player, you know, that ended up becoming a, a, a king, uh, like a lost tribe of elves. Uh, another one went down and, um, you know, tried to find a, um, a uh, ancient artifact that was very relevant to their, to their religion. Um, another one, uh, he became like the highest paladin, uh, of their order that had been on the earth for, you know, 200 years and he had a special title and he had, thus he had responsibilities You know, he got kind of tied up in the bureaucracy. Uh, another one got a mage was really, got really tied up with the mages guild and, uh, how he wanted to be an outsider and didn't really want to have to deal with all the rest of the mages. 
Uh, so tying all of that together into a cohesive story to where you're all looking at, you know, higher level characters, it's challenging. It is very, very challenging because if not, you end up with the situation that you're talking with Carol is that other players might start feeling resentful saying, you know, Hey, I'm a 18th level, 17th level, you know, you know, fighter. I mean, I'm, I'm a champion. Uh, you know, why, why, or why are you hogging all the limelight here? Uh, and, and, you know, so, so there's, there's going to be some of that there and the DM needs to be, needs to be aware of it. it. It's challenging. It's really, really hard. And I think the easiest way to handle it is to make sure that you communicate as a DM to the players saying, look, this part, we're going to be kind of focusing on this person's story, but here's where it's going to tie into your story. And here's where you're going to have conflict with. And I've been straight up telling before, you know, saying, look, when this guy does this, that's going to probably have some problems with your order because by him taking this, this, and this responsibility here, that's going to run kind of diametrically opposed to the, to the tenets of your faith. And, you know, I don't know how you guys are going to work that out, but I'm just letting you know that, you know, that it was fine when you guys were fourth and fifth level. Now that you're 17th, 18th, 19th level, um, your differences uh, are going to become more pronounced and your backstory is going to be much more relevant because now you're all fucking famous and you have to deal with it. You have to deal with the fame. You may turn to drugs. You know, you know what, Mr. GM, I wouldn't even tell them. <laughs> I that mom in their lap and let them figure out, you know, and let them just role play it as they, they want to. Yeah, um, I, I, I am. I am guilty of maybe talking too much. I, I, I admit that freely. Yeah, don't. That's one thing. Don't give spoil, man. Don't spoil things. And uh, I, I personally, that's that's one of the fun things of being a player for me. Is I love I love it when things are just dropped right on me, and I have to think. I have to think on my feet, basically, or in my chair, uh, to come up with a solution. Yeah, yeah. that's I love surprises in games. That's why I love finding out that he did. Frank did indeed through Taryn's evil sister into the game because I didn't even originally have it in there and he threw it in there and it was a holy shit surprise. And I, but I love that shit. So we we have to, I've, I've given props. He's very good at, at improvisational and throwing those surprises okay. and managing that in game. He's very yeah, good at it. it. It is. I know I wanted Frank, I kind of wanted Frank <laughs> on this too because he is really good at incorporating backstories into the game, as Kyle and I both can attest to. Uh, David, you're, uh, you're, you're the book in the bookend. So it's uh, it's plate spinning, folks. <laughs> so <laughs> seriously, everybody needs their time to shine, and it's up to the DM to actually pick those moments and it's like scott said if you have higher level characters uh you really got to think about it uh you know how or you know how to avoid the conflict not only as player in in real life but you know characters too and um I guess the point that I'm trying to make is it's really hard to strike that balance and a DM's really got to know that moment when to inject it. One of the things that I encountered was that like for the campaign that I was in, um, I, I just wrote a backstory. I did not expect it to, to be incorporated into the campaign whatsoever. You know, it was just like, okay, this happened to my character. And that's it. You know, I, you know, some players really don't really want to contribute a backstory. All they care about is just playing the game, you know, yeah. encounters, loot. Yeah. That's it. That's all they want. That's it, folks. You know, they're not, they're, they're just not deep players. And um, yeah. And that's where it gets tricky for the DM because if you got players like that, I mean, in, in the, the campaign, that, that goes on with Murder Hobo. I, I, it seems like more characters have more developed uh, backstories than some of the others. And it, you you're know, on, Frank kind of, you're, huh? You're so, yeah, you're absolutely right. Because I know Maniz, Maniz actually did not, I don't think really have much of one at the beginning, Frank, mm -hmm. but he developed one. Like we had that point where I had just joined and we split 
And then he actually did some stuff where he created a backstory at that point. Um, Ernie has come straight out and said, I'm not going to actually spoil it, um, but he, he has said, this is my backstory. And it's like one sentence long. Uh-huh. It, it, it's like end of story. But I mean, even as a GM, I could actually see, you know, something happened to his parents. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, there's a mystery there that you could actually you could actually sink your hooks into. If this actually goes to the next question. And I, I want to hear okay. Kyle first on this question. We're going to the next question. So but you get the point. Mm-hmm. So oh, yeah. is there anything else you wanted to say? Uh, <coughs> yeah, I mean, uh, one of the things that I think that you can do to like, you know, if you've got to bring one of your players to the for- forefront, uh, have it to where the other players will actually help contribute to that person's backstory. I mean, I think that's a gr- great, you know, great way to, to balance it out. Um, and essentially, I mean, you know, it basically when I'm, when I'm in a campaign and something like that happens, like it, it, something in in a backstory for one of our characters became like, uh, okay, this character is going to need help doing this. So other players started contributing to it, uh, and their backstories were added and, and things that, they needed to resolve actually helped my character resolve theirs. So it was like, it was like a big therapy session, but anyway, um, it's, you know, it, it's like I said, it's a, it's a balancing act, you know, and it's hard. And that, that's how you measure yourself as a DM, you know, is how well you're able to handle that. So. I agree. Answer. Kyle. Yes. Remember the (laughs) Uh, you know, I think Scott and David made such great points that I would only dilute it with my... (laughs) Come on, contribute. We're talking about character participation. Come on. Basically, basically it was, you know, the whole, well, how do you, you know, weave in everybody's Oh, I remember what it is. Yeah, how do you make it not focus particularly on one player? Uh, And I'm going to steal David's answer, and I'm going to talk over you, Carol. I want to steal David's answer from the last two questions past, which is that's something you should cover in session zero, which is, you know, if you guys are playing that campaign where the backstories are uh, arcs um, in a campaign, at the very beginning, you just say, hey, you know, this is a story about all four of you, but keep in mind, at some point, some of you are going to shine a little bit more um and that's just part of this campaign that we're going to run or you're sidelining the backstory a little bit and you know at that point it's just like a regular campaign where every character has a moment to shine uh and as players you have to start to recognize that and realize oh i was going to make a really inappropriate joke there i'm going to hold it back (laughs) i'll save it for another time because this character right now is about to give a speech and I don't know what it is, but this could be epic. Let's watch. Uh, And it's just, um, as I'm taking it, the player's point of view, it's learning to recognize those moments in a story when it's not your time to shine, where you're there to help push the other character forward. And I mean, honestly, I find those interesting where you do have an arc that focuses on one character and they end up figuring out their backstory or at least coming to a point in the story where it's like, okay, I can continue with my backstory and I could see it to the end or I have completed my backstory and I could revel in everything that it's given me or I could leave it unfinished, leave it all behind right now because these are the group of heroes, friends who have helped me complete this and I want them to have the same thing. And it's kind of that point in the story where, you know, members really become dedicated to the group they're a part of. Um, so recap, that's a session zero thing where you talk among the players and players be mindful. 
That is if your session zero has everybody there. When we did session zeros for our Tuesday game, there was it was one person at a time actually. And it ran basically ran the backstories. Um but that but that's it. Uh but that leads that leads right into the whole thing about um so to complicate matters further, what if you've got somebody who has like literally like a one sentence, you know, uh backstory and they're like yeah they'll as you said they want they just want to play they don't, they're not good at writing backstories what would you do to try to bring them up to give them a little more you know to play off of I'll, I'll, you know Kyle continue because I feel like it, it just continues off your answer so uh uh well <laughs> I'm gonna ask another question at the end of that but um I think at that point we're back to the DM um and him just trying to figure out and trying to get the characters to think in character and it's just like oh hey yeah you were raised by a bunch of wolves uh and then you just participated in the wholesale slaughter of of some werewolves or some dire wolves that have attacked this town and there's some normal wolves on there how does your character feel i mean they were raised by wolves you just had to murder a bunch and you start to get the player to start thinking about it. And when they start to think about it, you can, again, start asking questions. And you might be able to draw a backstory off of there. Uh, the question I was going to, uh, uh, that I kind of thought about along with that is, as a DM, changing a character's backstory, is there a, I didn't really think about how to phrase this question. Um mm -hmm. Well, How much? Wait, wait, wait. I have, I think I have an answer for you. So, are we talking like okay? So I submitted a backstory to a GM once, and mm -hmm. he basically took that backstory and turned it on its head. Yes. He changed. He basically every all everything I conceived mm -hmm. was completely wrong, and on and and in that case, I loved it because what it was is he basically built this whole secret subplot that was going on mm -hmm. that's what i mean i love surprises and boy when that secret subplot came out it was amazing and it said that guy arguably is the best gm i've ever had we that was the one where we literally we had so few combats and spent most of our sessions running for our lives running away from the inquisition and and this and that and the other thing and we had so much crazy shit happen we didn't care we didn't miss the combat and that was one of the crazy shit things that happened was the, the fact that he turned my character's backstory on its head. And and I'd say if you're going to do it for that reason, yes, but you got to be careful because then you take, on the other hand, my husband, who had a whole idea for his character, and he ended up switching it because he didn't like the direction it went in. So you got to know your players, I think, before you try something like that. Well, in Carol, my case, it works. In his case, it didn't. Carol, no one expects a Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You better watch out. They're going to break out the comfy chair. <laughs> <laughs> nice. so that's, that's my answer to that. I don't know if you guys have anything you want to add to that. But I do want to get to a little bit of PC, you know, the PC side things. And I do want to finish this. Um. Do you okay. have anything? I just I just let him if if they have <laughs> done a big backstory, I just let just let it lie. I don't I don't make any attempt to to fill it out for them. But eventually, uh, then I figure if they if they want it, then then they do it. The PC's backstory is the PC's backstory, but um, I, I, I figure out, as a player grows into the game and grows into their character that they'll. They may not initially have it, but if it's something that they want, then they'll get it. That's my opinion. Not wrong, because I just finished up Curse of Strahd, and we didn't really go in with backstories to that, because basically our backstories weren't going to come, we didn't think would come too much into play. We're all from different, we're all from all different places. So honestly, any of our enemies or whatever there weren't going to be relevant here. So I didn't really come up with one. And then over the course of the entire thing, we came up with one anyway. So you can't actually do it on the fly. Right. It's kind of interesting too. It made it so much more interesting. 
David, how about you? No, I agree with what Scott says. I mean, sometimes, I mean, <laughs> you just got to let it ride, you know? I mean, the player contributes as much as, you know, they want. And, you know, if they, again, if it's just one sentence for, for the background, then, you know, that's just see how it unfolds. You know, they may start to get into it and start saying, Hey, it's just like, you know, I really, you know, like on an aside, I want to take my character into this, you know, direction. And then you're just like, okay, you know, a, a DM could be like, okay. And then try to incorporate that into the, the game, into the arc of the story. So, you know, one of the things that I did, I mean, I, I had a, I had an incident and an incident where, uh, you know, uh, player just multi-class themselves to like uselessness <laughs> and we had to <laughs> we had to incorporate that into the game they were a warlock okay and it's just like you know now they're just a, a bard and it's just like you know like one of the things you know they incorporated it. it's just like oh the war you know they had to commune with the war with the patron right before they left and explain it's not you, it's me, it's this and all that. And, uh, you know, and the DM just ran with it. It was hilarious. Oh, my God. It was funny. I, I, I once had a thing where you had a, where I had a warlock character and one patron bought out the pact of the other patron. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> a hostile takeover. There you go. Yeah. Now you're working for me. <laughs> that, I'll tell you what that's the sort of twist I enjoy now I'm I'm going to answer that question my own question about so unlike you two Scott and David I would not necessarily let it lie but once again it's know your players um, know if they can take you taking that one sentence and turning it into something a bit bigger yeah so maybe, maybe they just were uninspired that day you know yeah I, those days where I'm trying to write up a backstory for a character, I just can't really think of anything. Kind of like, case in point, the Curse of Stride character. Um, at the time, I sort of was thinking about it, and I'm like, eh, it's not going to come into play anyway, so what does it matter? And so, you know, it, everybody can have their off days, too, and it's a big thing. Know your players. Yeah. If you think they'll like you taking that once, your, your, your parents died so you're raised by wolves you know what happened to the parents what killed them you know that's there's something there that you as a gm could take and you could develop gnomes. and go it down was it was gnomes. Gnomes. it's always now it may be gnomes in this game all right so one final all right so one final thing and i wanted to I said i want to do a little bit from the the uh, pc side of things as a player what it, I, give me everybody give me a few basic ideas of how you interject your character's backstory when you're playing a game. So David, I'll start with you this time. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you tell your you tell your DM you want to s s change your class, <laughs> and it's just like okay, I need to do this somehow. So, um, yeah, <laughs> but what i meant but i mean okay. that that's how i put my that's how i've done it you know but no seriously um yeah i mean i would um as a player from my point of view if i want to inject something into the backstory i, I would kind of kind of probe the dm you know <laughs> not literally but but uh you know, to find out how throw the DM. <laughs> shocker. Uh, <laughs> shocker. Uh, no, but what I what I mean is it's just like, okay, I, I've got this idea. Suddenly I'm inspired. When we first started to play the game, it was like writer's block. I had nothing. And suddenly this, okay, I want to go here with my character. And um but as a player to himself, I wouldn't do it on, on the fly, like, you know, to the DM, you know, just say, you know, come up with a character decision no, or something like that no, on my own. That's not really what I meant. Okay. Course, it sounded you have like it. Backstory. You know where you get it. How do you put it? How do you as a player put it into the game? Like what things do you do? Like if for me, 
you know, and, and uh, better yet, are you uh, are you the type who likes a uh, to play the long game and not tell anybody what's going on with your character, or do you like to have it all come out? Do you like to actually come out and tell your story at the beginning? Uh, both. <laughs> no, I. It's uh, right. Um, I, I'm kind of a long game person. I like s- stuff to come out, you know, at, at appropriate times. I guess you know. So. Um, I mean, you know, to answer your question, that that's how I like to to play the game as a character, putting it into the game. I like to think of the long game, you know. So. Yeah, I said I do too. All right, Scott, how about you? Well, I pretty much always like to play when I'm playing in a campaign. I like to play a family, so that way, if I have one character die, the <laughs> next character roll up is going to be their brother or their sister. Or their wow. cousin, or their niece, or their so that way I'm always having the same backstory, and basically my backstory evolves with the campaign to where now if I was the brother, then uh, then uh, and got killed, well now the sister's going to come and try to avenge me, and etc. So that that's how I interject. I role play my backstory um, fairly fairly aggressively, and and um, you know. But for instance, when I play error call, you know, that the fact that he has that speech impediment, that means he has a chip on his shoulder and, and he walks with that chip wherever he goes. That is such a great answer that that to me also having something like that is a way to get your characters back straight, having a, you know, even like you might have a catchphrase or things like that. You know, that's all ways to get your characters personnel. Right backstories and such into the campaign maybe personalities part two hey kyle you're still with us hey arlo (laughs) hi say hi uh i can expound a little bit on what scott mentioned uh i i have that as a plan b for a character that i'm playing so (laughs) seriously if my character dies uh there, there there's mechanics in the game where it can come back and and that's totally how I set it up. So yeah, I, I totally agree with Scott. You know, that is a great way to keep it on. If my character dies, there's a subclass that's like a revenant, and it's coming back. <laughs> it is coming back. Right, right, right. I hey, like that. Hey, Kyle. Yes. So how are you? So how are you going to get more of Dewey's backstory and such into the Murder Hobo campaign? I am going to continue as I always have, uh, uh, which is, well, I'm going to use a little bit more force than I used to. Oh my gosh, he's terrifying, isn't he? He looks like Kenny Rogers. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I would say when I first started pushing Dewey Docomel's, Dewey's uh, backstory into the campaign, uh, people took it as me being a murder hobo, which was me drilling holes into a boat. Which, yeah, I can understand how that was that, but it was like, no, 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 no. Dewey worships a goddess of destruction, so this is just like a a little temporary destruction that can easily be fixed. It's, shut up, Frank. (laughs) Bullshit in the chat. Uh, But it was uh, uh, taken the wrong way by everybody else, and we turned into a murder hobo campaign after that. Oh, so Um, it was all your fault? I think so. Yeah, I really pushed. We have murder hobo, folks. (laughs) That's true. That is very true. Honestly, honestly, as a player in that game, I really do want to find out. I like finding out about the characters in game, and in an organic way too. I don't want to just force, but um, but yeah, I I will say this uh, to all you GMs out there, including Frank: give your players some time to do some role playing. And let them talk in character. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> yeah, give them some time to talk in character. Yeah, well, whatever, Frank. I will. I, you is, know, the problem I, is, you know, whenever he does that, that, his players end up like Guido and talk about fucking chickens. And, uh, you know, and just, exactly what you want. That, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Okay, but that's, that Her. was a one. That was a one that's shot. That's true. That was a one shot, yeah. You have a blanket. 
You know what? You know what is funny is that when you have a one shot, uh, this one one quick comment. When you have a one shot, I think you may have a more limited backstory because you're not going to play that. But I think the players try harder to input or to try to interject their backstory into that one shot because that's what makes it memorable. Is they get to try to role play that even stronger. I know Kyle does that whenever he's playing some things. And uh, if he's playing like a rich noble, I remember he played this one thing where he goes and he just throws money on the ground to uh, to get people to run after as a, like a, almost like a protection for him. It was like, <laughs> and he throws money every which way. And then, then he skedaddles back a little bit. You know, so there, there, there are ways that you can interject your, uh, your character or your personality in a one shot. I think that's a little bit different because it all has to come out there in two or three hours. You've got to right. get it all in, right? Right. I mean, that's if you write backstories for your one shots. Now, I said you can. I said this last week. If you can, it just gives you an idea of your decision making process in, in a one shot. Right. But, um, but needless to say, in all in all seriousness, um, yeah. Sorry, Frank. But uh, I do think once in a while the players should get a chance to actually talk in character. And maybe they get to interject a bit of who they are and their backstory into the chat. And I'm not saying we have to be a critical role, okay? And spend weeks and weeks and weeks doing nothing about role playing because I know they do. I oh, like, come on, you don't want to talk I, about Dewey Doc Mel's backstory for yeah, the next seven months? We're not. Yeah, exactly. We are not them. And I. <laughs> if you if you want to see this in action, folks, turn in on Thursdays for Cacophony. That's yeah, exactly I mean, what we're talking about. That's the thing. I like this better because I do like the fact there's more action in this mm -hmm. rather than spending said several weeks role playing. But give them a few minutes here and there to mm -hmm. chat. It's not that hard. Yep. And then maybe they'll take it a little more seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. so not a chance you, you're gonna get so killed <laughs> you're gonna be so dead and so dead is so funny i can't wait to watch all right for the record for the campaign yeah we are campaign this saturday i'm really excited because our characters are in shit yeah well my sister has to, he's right it, my it was nice so. knowing you taryn <laughs> all right, all right, so not just no yep yeah, wait my sister will wear my head as a hat first of all if she gets a hold of me, which honestly, as a player, I'm hoping so, because the more shit my characters are in, the more fun I have. <laughs> I like to see how far I can get, get to that cliff before I go falling off. <laughs> you poked the bear, Frank. <laughs> I've been for 30 years. I mean, I mean I, I'm at the point now where challenges are what I really want. And Saturday is going to be a big freaking challenge. So, I mean, we're... A lot of us are running out of spells and Dewey has no rages. And I mean, we're probably going to take a short rest to try to recover some stuff, but it's, it's going to be a great challenge and I'm going to be, it's going to be very interesting to see how it plays out. <laughs> and then I think it's going to be even more interesting when we finally get back up in the streets and whatever the bullshit's going to happen there. And then we'll see, we'll see how much backstory comes out there. So uh i final thoughts actually i were a little over but i figured we might be because this is a great topic i i love backstories so uh i'm gonna start with kyle he's just shaking his head no what do you mean no he has no thoughts he's got no thoughts all right no fine uh, you know what david you're next uh <clears throat> final thought um a good example to see everything that we discuss. Tune in on Thursdays, and you'll see how Frank handles it. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, because it, it's one shots, and you you're you're pretty limited. So, yeah. But anyway, this has been a great topic, and uh, yeah, we can expound on this for hours, actually. Yeah. So, we really could, uh, uh, Scott. Well, I know I can expand on this round because I love the sound of my own voice. My voice <laughs> really is, does. is almost as great as my hair looks right now. And my <laughs> hair is fucking amazing. All he, in he, the stream. He's got that, that Morgan Freeman so, sounding voice. You know, it's just soothing. <laughs> I actually have a pretty good 
<clears throat> I, I used to have a really good in, um, in, a really good impersonation of um, in, a really good impersonation of Morgan Freeman, but I can't do it anymore. <laughs> I, I, I he had that one. Uh, what was it? Deep Impact or something like that? You know mm-hmm. about. Uh, it, it, I used to be able to do his whole speech at the end about the comet came and the thing, but now anyway. So um, no, th- this this is a good topic. Backstories are I, I think are important, but they're very challenging for the for the DM. Um, they're they are challenging for a player as well, uh, getting them to to role play because that's the essence. Your backstory is your character. Your character is what you role play. You have archetypes that are supposed to be, you know, touchstones, uh, fighter, wizard, bard, warlock, all these things that are supposed to be a combination of skills about what you can do, but your character and your backstory is who you are as a player. So that's, that's how you role play. Um, so that's, it's basically the game. I mean, it, when done correctly, it's why people love to play D&D. When done poorly, it's why people leave. That was my final thoughts. That's very true. Uh, uh, my final thoughts are, I, I love backstories. I think they add, they add a lot more to the game and they make your players, or if you're the players, they, I think they make you more invested in the game. So, um, and incorporating them is, 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 it's, it's super, it's probably, it's one of the most important things you can do as a GM. Um, so with that, uh, I want to thank you guys. You guys had a lot of great insights. Uh, good thank show. You. Really good tonight. Really enjoyed it. Uh, so of course, um, I want to thank our sponsors, Oddfish Games, makers of Adventure Sense. So if you want your, your game room to smell like a tavern, you can do that. Uh, of course, Pirate Dog Dice. Beach. Custom Dice. Um, I said I love my custom dice, my Taran Dice. Uh, I use it the campaign, and they usually roll, much to Frank's annoyance, they roll really, really well. Uh, let's see what else. Of course, there's the follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Check out our YouTube archives. Trevor Frick says uh, that we have a Discord, so come and chat with us there. And we have a four. Hang on, Frank. Wow. No. Do it now, Carol. No. Do it now. All right. Right now. Shut up. Shut up. Uh, and of course, we have a store with all sorts of great stuff in it. Uh, you can buy a duvet. You can buy shirts. You can buy notebooks. The shower curtain. Yeah, I think that is. Probably, probably towels. Uh, and finally, if you want to seat at this table to join our discussions, uh, you know, or you want to play one of our games, although all of our games are full this week, watch out, Frank, you're going to have to do another night because we've got too many people. Uh, uh-uh. <laughs> Unless you start what? having more DMs. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. So much for you to step up in GM. Although, I tell you the truth, I it's... love that Scott GM a campaign because I think you'd be just friggin' awesome at it. I, I, I'm, I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. So I, I have to, I have to, I have to get a lot more content now. But yeah, I, 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 I wouldn't mind doing that maybe one day. So, uh, but if you want to see it at this table, get a hold of us. It's uh, mhoboinc at gmail or you can DM our uh, Twitter, the Twitter account at mhoboinc. mhoboinc is the main theme for most of things. So, uh, there's Jen I, in this. I hope everybody go has- to bed, child. Everybody, everybody go ahead and wave. It's time to say, say bye. bye. See you all. Bye, bye. Bye. Bye.